welcome to the celebration of Holy Communion by Bishop Cal Lippitt at the Catacomb Chapel of St. Uriel of the Universal Episcopal Church. Wherever you are, especially if circumstances prevent you from receiving the sacrament physically, you are welcome to spiritually receive the sacrament here with us. Church Back Home is a presentation of the Universal Episcopal Church and the Wise Ones Net. Universal Episcopal Church is an independent religious body. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <coughs> Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe, we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who showest to them that are in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return to the way of righteousness, grant unto all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may avoid those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> the epistle is written in the first epistle of St. Peter in the second chapter beginning with the second verse. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors 
as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do e do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put into silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness but as servants of God honor all men love the brotherhood fear God honor the king here at Ethiopus the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. John glory be to thee O Lord Jesus said to his disciples a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father then sent some of his disciples among themselves what is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Ye inquire among yourselves of what I of that I said, a little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me. Verily, verily I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman when she is in travail hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life who proceedeth from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The epistle reading for today is attributed to St. Peter. And it kind of upsets me. Not the words of it, but how it gets abused. Submit yourself to every ordinance of men. Oh yeah? Well then, 
the Roman authorities told St. Polycarp and a number of other Christians, all you have to do is toss a little handful of incense onto the fire of Caesar and we won't bother you. And you can go back with your life and you, and you won't be killed here in the arena. Should they have done that? After all, duly constituted authority was telling them, toss that incense into, into Caesar's fire. Move forward a few years later in the 1950s. A black woman named Rosa Parks, seamstress, was tired after a long day of work. And she was sitting on the bus and a white man demanded that she give up her seat for him. And she said no. And that began a bus boycott which began a lot of other things and wound up with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Rosa Parks started off by refusing to give up her seat for a white man. Are we saying that Rosa Parks was wrong because of the Bible? Well, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of people that go saying that sort of thing. And now, I understand in a few days there may be an executive order coming down. <clears throat> it says that if you use religion as an excuse, it's okay to discriminate against whatever kind of people. So, does that make it right? Because it says here, and because it's being signed as an executive order, I don't think so. Just laws, yes, of course. We don't zoom through the red light just because we feel like it and we don't see anybody else coming from the other way. We don't we don't do a lot of things because not only does the law say so, so but logic says so. We pay our taxes because that way we contribute to, a, to some pools of money that provide for us. That's how we get our police. That's how we get our national defense. That's how we get our schools, our public schools anyway. Yeah. But, it's just like saying, should the pilgrims in 1620 have stayed off of the Mayflower and not, not bothered coming over to Massachusetts? They should have obeyed the law and attended the Church of England and followed their rules? I don't think so on that one either. Common sense, folks. Bear in mind at the time that St. Peter wrote that, there hadn't been any persecutions yet. And Rome, characteristically, didn't bother with what your religion was. And so more it be. God is not unrighteous that you'll forget your works and labor that proceedeth of love, which love ye have showed for his name's sake, who have ministered unto the saints and yet do minister.
Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as that above all. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer under thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in, in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Liz, Debbie, Julie, Dorothy, Tom, Trinity, Heather, Deborah, Natalie, J.A., John, Cassandra, Marilyn, Hope, Heather, Aiden, Lewis, Rebecca Priest, Mark Bishop, and Munir Bishop. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching them to grant beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we be made partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant us, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. <coughs> Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble, humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all.
have mercy upon you, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What a day. Hear what our what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For the thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy little beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate making here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless us and sanctify. 
with thy word and Holy Spirit. These thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine. And we receive them according to the Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution. In remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood we and all thy whole church may attain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto the any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost. All honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and in us. Amen. O Lamb of God that take us away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. Jesus Christ, which is given for you. This is the body and soul of your life. Take and eat this in the world before you die for me. And for the eyes of thy heart, by faith and thanksgiving. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee. Preserve that body and soul and do it us. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee and be thankful.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee. And feed on him in thy heart by faith, with thanksgiving. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee. Preserve that body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the sight of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesu, hear me. Within thy wounds hide me, separated from thee let me never be, from the malicious enemy defend me, in the hour of my death call me, and bid me come unto thee that with thy saints I may praise thee, forever and ever. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you within my soul since I cannot now receive you sacramentally. Come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as being already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us. We have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members, members in corporate, in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with that grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. 
We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that take us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Okay. <clears throat> Let us pray. Eternal Father, I offer you the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus. In your noon at the Mass is said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere and for sinners within the universal church, those in, within, in our own homes and within our families. Amen. Gracious God, look with mercy upon the souls of our deceased family, relatives, and friends. Grant that those you have called from our homes and our hearts may enter the embrace of your faithful and everlasting love in heaven. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. <coughs> o loving God, through the heavenly intercession of St. Hugh, welcome our beloved deceased into the company of the saints. Where tears are no more, all suffering and pain are ended, and there is great joy, abundant life, and peaceful rest in your loving presence. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. With the union of the Holy Gospel, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness unto that light. He was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.